So, Ginger. Yeah? You know how we wanted to start a podcast, but we were having trouble coming up with a topic? Yeah. Okay, so here's my pitch. The topic of the podcast is us trying to come up with the topic for the podcast. What? Like we pitch each other podcast ideas and that's the podcast? Yeah, exactly. We could call it, What Should Our Podcast Be About? Miles, that's really stupid. Let's do it. What should this song be about? I'm trying to figure it out. What should this song be about? Could you perhaps help me out? I've had a moment of doubt. What should this song be about? Welcome to What Should Our Podcast Be About? The podcast where we try to figure out what this podcast you're listening to right now should be about. I'm Miles Grover. And I'm Ginger Barrow. And we were off last week for a sad reason. Yes. Do you want to talk about it at all? Or? Um... Yeah, I mean, my sister passed away suddenly, so feeling pretty, pretty sad. Going to try to not let that affect this episode too much, but uh, if I sound slightly melancholy, that's why. Yeah, so that's obviously sad, but um, we're going to move on for now and talk about silly podcast stuff. Right? Yeah. Um, I do have one update from our previous episode. All um, right. Because I found the video of the cheetah meowing okay like a cat. An important an important update yes um so i'm just gonna find that <coughs> oh <coughs> it just sounds like a baby <coughs> it's a big kitty sounds like a baby and they're, they're purring too you can hear oh i love that all right. So we that don't was, deserve cats. <laughs> that was that. Well, we might deserve our cats because they're... <laughs> they're also wonderful even uh, when they're annoying. Yeah, but they're also annoying when they're annoying. Um, <laughs> well. You know, because that's, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was our last episode, What Sound an Animal Make. We're not doing that now other than what I just did here with the cheetah sound. Just so everyone knows that cheetahs do meow like kitty cats and purr like kitty cats. You're welcome. You're welcome, the internet. <laughs> um, but we have new ideas, probably. Mm -hmm. Probably we do. Probably. I mean, if we don't, this is going to be a... Rough episode. Kind of rough episode. Yeah. Um, actually, I do have some ideas that somebody else sent to us, so we can talk about that. All right. Oh, um, we got some, some listener submissions, huh? Yes. Uh, should we start with that? Yeah, let's start with the listener submissions. Okay. Well, so it's one listener with multiple submissions. So our friend Lori sent this to me. She said that she got high and wrote down this long document of ideas she had. <laughs> um, and I have the... Uh, it is quite long, uh, as you can oh, see. Oh, wow. There's quite a few paragraphs and bullet points here. Uh, so I'll probably... I might not read this whole thing, but... Yeah, let's save let's let's save them, pepper them throughout the episodes. All right. Well, I can read the first one or get started with the first one she had here. Okay. It says, "Unlikely doppelgangers. This podcast intentionally misuses the word doppelganger for things and beings that are named the same thing but are very much unlike. So, homonyms but with a cooler name. A few episode ideas." So, she has a dog named Miles, and I think I'm assuming that this is kind of the uh, you know, inspiration for this. Um, episode one, Miles the dog and Miles Grover. Uh, what's it like having to interface with two very different beings named the same not so common name? We could talk to other duos whose pairing is comical or cringy. How easy or hard has it been for you to disconnect an existing meaning to a name when another being with the same name enters your life? So this does sound a little bit like it was written when you were high. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, no, it's like the problem that we have with our good friend Goosebump. Who we're always mistaking for our cat, for our Goosebump, cat, our, yeah, Goosebump. our friend Goosebump Jones, yeah, and uh, Sock Johnson, <laughs> right. our other good friend, and of course our friend Snally Gaster Smith, <laughs> with the same name as our cat. It's yeah. weird that we just happen to have it's, friends with the same name yeah. as our cats. Millennials have some weird names. Yeah, I guess so. Um, she actually has episode forty-six, episode nine, episode thirty-one. <laughs> Election special, New Year's special, down, ah, down here. For uh, all for this idea. All for this idea. Okay. 
Uh, I don't know if I'm going to read all of these, but uh, Apple, Gwyneth Paltrow's daughter, and what kind of apples does she like to eat? <laughs> um, uh, so you think we could get Apple on our podcast? Uh, Crocs versus crocodiles. Which would you rather have? <laughs> yeah. That one seems like an easy answer. Does it? Yeah. I mean, I'd rather have the comfy shoes. I'd rather have a crocodile wearing Crocs. Because that sounds amusing. Well, that wasn't an option, Miles. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So basically, also, like, if you put Crocs, if you manage to put Crocs on a crocodile, I think it's the last thing you're gonna do. Well, he probably won't be able to chase me as well because he'll be having a hard time running. Because they're usually pretty fast. You gotta get pretty close to him to put his shoes on. True, but they are good at closing their mouths, but not good at opening their mouths. So if, as long as you hold their mouth closed while you do it. All right. You're, you're good. Oh, we go. your fl- your plan is foolproof. Yep, it's perfect. <laughs> um, so basically this podcast is two things with the same or similar names and talking about them or comparing them, I guess, is the idea. Okay. That kind of segues into one of my ideas. All right. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So it's, well, I was listening to another podcast where they were, ta- where somebody said, mentioned like, oh yeah, correcting people is never a good look. And I was thinking about a podcast called Don't Correct Me If I'm Wrong. Okay. I mostly just have the title. I was thinking we could flesh out the idea a little bit, but something to do with like incorrectly correcting someone or Mm -hmm. like what's the most annoying ways that people correct you and give you information that you didn't ask for. Now, I hate to correct you, but sometimes it is good to correct people. No. (laughs) (laughs) No, you love to correct me. And that's partially why I think this would be a great idea. So I don't love to correct you per se. Say. I like being correct. Wait, are about you correcting things? me on on whether I like to correct on whether you, you like to hmm. correct me? Because I think I is, might be is, a better judge of is that. Is any disagreement a correction? Um. Well, I think a good like measure of it is. Did you say actually before you right. said the thing? Right. Because then it's probably a correction. Yeah. Or was it information that somebody didn't want or care about or ask for? Right. It like did I did did somebody say a fact on and. and like, maybe the podcast is about why people correct people and, like, why people think it's important to, like, have the right information in certain circumstances. Right. Yeah. And is it useful or not useful? Is correcting people art? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, if art is meant to elicit a response, hmm. and sometimes that response is anger, then, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe. correcting people is it art. Be, it could be an art. Um, I, okay, that's interesting. I think despite my perhaps common know-it-allism that I have struggled with and being a guy that corrects people sometimes, I overall don't think correcting people is something you should do a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I get really annoyed when somebody corrects someone and the correction is wrong. Like that will... That will, like, trigger me. If you want to troll me, that's an extremely good way to do it because I will, like... Yeah. I will go off about it. So, like, maybe don't correct me if I'm wrong is about, like, common misconceptions. Like, things people think are true that aren't actually true. So it's who it's it's um who corrects the correctors yeah. or something, maybe? Yeah. Or, like, there, there's a... I feel like there's a page that I follow called, like incorrectly correcting people Mm -hmm. where it's just like where somebody like you know for example somebody used your instead of y-o-u apostrophe r-e and sometimes you'll see somebody like saying like oh yeah it should be like when you're talking about your table and if somebody came in and said like oh no that should be y-o-u apostrophe r-e right being wrong when they correct um yeah, I feel like a podcast called "Don't Correct Me If I'm Wrong." I did what say I, ex- I mostly had the title. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm saying, uh, I think what I would expect from that podcast is people spouting a lot of facts that might not be at all true. Yeah, but well, maybe that in a could fun be way. too. That could be like we pick a subject to delve into, give some correct info, but also a lot of incorrect info. Yeah, is that bad though? Is that bad to do? It's not bad if it's funny. But if it is misinformation or whatever. Well, if it's very clearly misinformation where you're like, yeah, if a bobcat 
if you find a bobcat in your yard, like jelly beans, give jelly beans to the bobcat because bobcats love jelly beans. Or bobcats are terrified of jelly beans. You throw a couple <laughs> jelly beans, bobcat will be gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that could be maybe not true, but it might work. If you chuck some jelly beans at a bobcat, maybe it would run away. Yeah. That's not It might impossible. attack you, though. Yeah. Might depend on how good you are at throwing jelly beans from afar, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or from, like, your window, maybe. We've gotten a little too deep into my jelly bean analogy. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah, there might be something here. I think if we talk about this, it'll be more like figuring out what the podcast even is. Yeah. Than, like... I mostly, Doing like I idea. said, I just liked the title. Yeah, don't correct me if I'm wrong. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah, all right, that's pretty good. I have an idea that's sort of, actually sort of along similar lines. Uh, so the idea is called Back in My Day. Okay. And it's a podcast where we pretend to be old people and talk about stuff, how the stuff used to be, but we're just making stuff up. Okay. So it's okay. Like kind of like the you know you remember on the Simpsons the Grandpa Simpsons thing about like, and we wore an onion on our belt at the time. Which was the fashion at the time. time. Yeah, 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 whatever it was. So it's kind of like that. Uh, so I, like you know it'd be like back in my day, if you wanted to send an email, you had to attach a letter to an elephant <laughs> that was going in the right direction, <laughs> and it was hard because letters. We're called that because you could only include one letter per document. And so if you wanted to send someone the word hello, you had to send six different letters and even six different elephants. And you might think that's weird because there's five letters in hello, but actually we spelled hello with an extra L. <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing. All right. right. Like just making up random crap about whatever, but doing it like... The old days were so much better or, or so much worse or, you know, uphill both ways to school, whatever, that kind of stuff. I feel like that could get old pretty quickly. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe. I mean, would we just pick random things to talk about? Yeah, I don't know. We could figure out what, what we would talk about maybe if we talked we about this We should pick a subject each week. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's whatever's in the news or, you know, well. What's in the news is usually horrible lately, I feel like. But, uh, you know, yeah, ran we could have a random topic generator. We could have listeners send in ideas, suggestions, or what ha what it was like back in their day or whatever. Okay. I feel like I can't... I, I feel like I'm not going to be able to come up with anything funny off the cuff, really, for too much for that. I also feel like I don't really have a good old people voice down sounds right. like you do let's hear it let's give it a try back in my day that's pretty good yeah was it it's better than the voices we had back in my day <laughs> back in my day old people sounded like young people <laughs> <laughs> and our old timey things were actually new timey things <laughs> uh all right well i have another idea okay um and it is called it could be worse Okay. And it is just where we talk about something bad that happened to us and figure out ways that it could be worse. Okay. Do you like have an example. Oh, my cat pooped on the rug and I stepped in it in my bare feet this morning. That is a very relatable anecdote. <laughs> Our cat has some some thyroid issues. Bowel problems. Bowel problems. Thyroid issues that have caused bowel problems that are slowly starting to get better, but yeah. Um, and then you could come up with a way that that could be worse. Yeah. Okay. Um, you could have stepped on um, nuclear waste and got irradiated. No, that would that would be a lot worse. Yeah. That would a lot. That would be, you know, you're dead. Worse. Yeah. You um, could have just stepped on a grenade or a landmine. I yeah. Guess. Yeah, I was thinking we would like <laughs> incrementally, like yeah, maybe, yeah. well, like, and also maybe something that's, that's likely to happen in your house. Yeah, or maybe it hopefully could be like, it's not likely that you're going to stop in nuclear waste in your house or a landmine or a landmine. Uh, maybe it, maybe it if could it be is, like, you probably need to move. Maybe it could be like you say something that's bad that happened, like the cat poop thing. Okay. The next person tries to say. The thing that's worse, that's the least amount worse they can. 
And then the next person, then after that, you try to see if you can figure out something just a little in, bit in between them. Okay. okay. And then if you can't, then you have to say something worse and that, that has to try to be like just the smallest amount worse. Okay. Yeah, that could work. Maybe that could be fun. So, yeah. so in that, I, I was kind of thinking like, well, you're trying to come up with something that's like, that would be worse, but plausible. That's going to make me feel better about the fact that I stepped in cat poop. Right. Feeling better about it. Yeah. I, I think if you, if we were doing it so that we're trying to make it just slightly worse, that's a lot more realistic and a lot less. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, but you know, well, you could have, you, instead of stepping in cat poop, you could have never been born. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously that's like, okay, but that doesn't help me feel better. Yeah. Like, it's like, maybe, yeah. maybe the. Yeah, like, exactly. Right. Like, I mean, it could be like. You could have set the baby down in cat poop. Okay. Okay. That's worse. All right. Sure. I'm is glad there, that didn't happen. Is there something between stepping in it and setting the baby in it? Did you, in the original example, did you step in it and then track it around the house? Because that'd be a bit worse. No, I didn't in the original example, but that has happened. Yeah, but not in bare feet. Not in bare because feet. Because in bare feet, you obviously notice it. Yeah. But I think one time, like, I stepped on it on the rug or whatever, and my, I had just put my shoes on, and I didn't notice for a little yeah. while. Yeah. PSA, that's why you don't wear shoes in the house. Well, we were about to leave, and I just had to go run to get something, I think. But... No shoes in the house, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, then I could have just stepped in it, I guess. That would have been sort of better. It would have been better for our floor and yeah. our like cleaning up, up, cleany uppy situation. <laughs> cleany uppy situation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think that could be a fun podcast. That could be fun. Okay. So you could have set your baby in it or what could be slightly worse um, or maybe a lot worse. You could have set your baby down and not noticed it. And the and baby, the baby... Could have grabbed some and put it in their mouth. Oh, right? yeah. A real fear we've had. Yeah. <laughs> as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't uh, know. Yeah. That would. I'm sorry if I'm. I'm just sitting here silently horrified now. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that, that's interesting. It could be. It could be fun. Um, let's see. Another idea. Uh, or should I pull. Why don't I look at some more of Lori's ideas? All right. Uh, she has one called Jingle Jangles. Listen to random jingles for businesses and restaurants and flesh out their backstory. When and where does the per- business exist? Who is the person singing the jingle? Did their love interest just break up with them? Are they an Ivy League grad who couldn't find a job so their mom got them an audition with her ex-husband's talent agency and he scored this gig? Or are they just a run-of-the-mill former theater kid who now works multiple jobs and has Many roommates, but considers themselves hot stuff because they got an IMDb page. That was kind of weirdly specific, but um, yeah, I mean, okay. I don't know. So the idea. So we would listen to like. Uh, I don't like the part where we have to listen to lots of jingles. Yeah, like jingles. I mean, sometimes they're fun. Like that one that's like the guy like singing about how great pizza is or whatever. What? I've showed you that before. I'll play a little clip of it. All right. When I get a serious craving for something I want to eat, I need some cheese, tomatoes, and olives, and maybe even some meat. I need some pizza, 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 pizza. Every time I want that pizza, 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 pizza. I go to David's Pizza. I don't. It's, the video is, it's better with the video. Though. I don't remember this, but. Um, sometimes jingles are kind of fun, I guess, or funny, but I feel like there would be a lot of like listening to I stuff. I feel like it, th- we would be creating a barrier to us wanting to record yeah, our podcast like, oh, if we God, would think that. I'd be like, listen. no. Yeah. Because I like am, am happy to avoid commercials as much as possible. Yeah, 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 for sure. And like purposefully subjecting ourselves to them. To get them stuck in our head, which is the point of jingles. Right. Right. Would be pretty obnoxious. Right. I've already got a couple stuck in my head now, so. This one is kind of funny that it's on this list, though, because I did have such completely separately, I had written down jingles for products that don't exist as an idea, like coming up with random jingles, but that would, that would be difficult. Yeah. That would require a musical talent that I do not have. Yeah. Yeah. That I I do not possess. We'd probably, I mean, we could probably come up with some kind of random jingle that would probably be based on some other jingle we heard, but forgot we heard. Right. But I I feel like if we did that, they would probably end up sounding pretty samey after the first one or two of them. Yeah. Something. So I wasn't, 
you know. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if we, if I could do that, I would be doing that. That seems like a good way to make some money. It's writing jingles. Yeah. Know? Yeah, I mean, I guess it would be basically like, can we write jingles? Yeah. They wouldn't have to be good, though, right? And they would, part of it would be like funny, bad products, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it could be could be fun coming up with useless products, I suppose. Which we but isn't do- that kind of what we're doing with this podcast uh, already? <laughs> well, it's definitely in line with the, the overall podcast vibe. Yeah. I mean, we could also come up with like business ideas or uh, product ideas without, they don't have to have jingles, right? That would be required either way. So it wouldn't necessarily have to be a jingles thing, I guess, either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lori's last main idea here, which also has many bullet points, um, is it says, it's Freaking Bats. I guess that's the name. Uh, It's a year-round Halloween podcast, um, which is funny because I also had written down recently, I'd written down year-round podcast. I mean, you have me me already at year-round Halloween Halloween podcast. podcast. Um, Her ideas for that, uh, some recurring segments include... Costume superlatives where readers submit their own costume photos and we rate them on a scale of zero bats to five bats. <laughs> um, I like this bat scale. Yeah. Historical hauntings, facts about the history of Halloween and different ways it's been celebrated across the world and throughout time. Trick or tr- tricks are for kids, which we already had an idea called that, but this is where we pitch parent- tricks parents could offer kids when their doors are knocked on in lieu of candy. Insert dad jokes here. Okay, I don't know what that means, but I'll did house reviews. Well, a tr- trick could be like telling telling a dad joke instead of giving I guess candy. So. Yeah, I guess so. Um, haunted house reviews, uh, scream of the week, host's favorite thing from that week that's somehow tied back into Halloween. Field trips, we go to haunted house and record our reactions. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, okay. Code orange, best Halloween decor purchases. Um, it's not a phase. We talked to elder goths and scene kids whose parents were totally bummed when they realized it wasn't a phase. <laughs> yeah, I like this. No, yeah. I like this. I think this could be fun. I don't think we're going to do it just sitting in in our living room, but... Um, yeah, I don't know how we would... I but mean, uh, I like the idea of going to haunted houses probably more than you do. Yeah, I don't particularly like haunted houses. It's whatever. <laughs> I mean, what, but like, would you be cool with like going and wandering around some cool old abandoned house? Um, in theory, I think the practical limitations of recording in there, I mean, we'd have to buy more equipment basically to be able to record anything reason with a reason. Oh, this is boring to talk about. We're not here for practical concerns. That's not what this podcast traffics in. I mean, sometimes it does. You. Wanted to go knock on people's doors and ask them about their toilets. So okay, but we, I disagree. We wouldn't need to buy additional equipment. Actually, maybe we would if we wanted to record it. Okay. So fair point, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Don't I'm... correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. If we did that idea, we'd probably just end up talking about Halloween stuff, which I guess is fine. Especially it's more it's than fine with me. Around Halloween already. It's more than fine with me. Yeah. I... Uh, if if it's not Halloween, I want to be talking about Halloween. Yeah. Preparing for Halloween. Preparing. Yeah. Okay. Um, Any excuse to watch I mean we could we could watch horror movies and rate them. True, true. Yeah. Just all the time. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Mm. There's a lot of horror movies. Can we we do won't run out of jump content. Jump scares on the podcast somehow. We do jump scares on the podcast. Ah! <laughs> yes, apparently <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> and I should have seen that coming, and it worked. I, and it worked. I got you. I jumped. I mean, that's jump scares, though. Even when you know they're coming, they get you. Right? Yeah. Even if you do know they're coming. Right? Well, that was a good one because I was. You were like, "Could we do jump scares?" And then I was sitting here thinking about it, which was the perfect opportunity <laughs> for you to get to, me with a jump you, scare. Yeah, yeah. Um, I bet that's pretty bad audio. We'll see how it turns <laughs> out, but. Um, uh, maybe our maybe our intro would just be a jump scare every time that would stop being effective immediately. Yeah. Uh, so probably not that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like if know. there was just a jump scare hidden somewhere in the podcast, <laughs> it would be pretty easy to find it if you were looking at the, um, you know, if you were looking at the waveform, I guess. But yeah. most people wouldn't be. Yeah. Although, would people just be like, "I'm not going to listen to that podcast anymore because I don't <laughs> like the fucking jump scares every time." I mean, it depends. You know, maybe your target audience is people who are real hungry for jump scares. Yeah. 
Is it even? There's people out there. Yeah, but is it even? The the whole thing about jump scares is like they have to be unex. Well, they have to be unexpected. I mean, I just said even if you know they're coming, they get you a lot of times. But like, if you jump scare over and over again, it very much loses its effect, right? Yeah. Um, well, but we don't do it over and over again. We do it. Ah! Once. Stop it. <laughs> I got you. Do it once per episode. (laughs) And (laughs) once, once per episode. If you don't know when it's coming. Yeah. Okay. That could build a lot of tension. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Also, fuck you. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. A little bit sorry. I was a little sleepy, so I see what you're trying to do there. Yeah. Yeah. Should we go through the ideas that we have this week? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have more ideas, but we'll we'll need more ideas next week. So yeah, we've got that's some. how this yep. continues to work. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so what we've had so far is Halloween all year round that we were just talking uh-huh. about. Yep, or, which might be called it's freaking bats or something. Yeah. Uh, don't correct me if I'm wrong. Don't correct me if I'm wrong. Back uh-huh. in my day. Back in my day, it could be worse. It could be worse. Jingle jangle. Jingle jangle, yep. And unlikely doppelgangers. Unlikely doppelgangers. Well, I think you know where my vote is going to go. It's the Halloween one. Is yeah, your vote. yeah. I don't think it's probably unlikely doppelgangers because we'd have to think about, we'd have to come up with some two things that are named the same that are interesting to talk about in some way or whatever. Like that would require some thinking and who needs that. So. Not me. No. And then jingle jangles. Even if we wanted to do that, I don't know if we really could because we'd have to go find some jingles to listen to. Or if whatever. we don't, I don't want to do that. I don't even hear jingles anymore because I don't really listen to the radio. I really and don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't want to ruin my YouTube search that way. Right, right. I do. St- I do like the back in my day idea. I but... think you just like. I think a theme that I have noticed is that you just like doing voices. Yeah, kind of. I'm not all that good How at it. How could I be an old person? How could I be a vampire? <laughs> How could I be Kermit the Frog? How could I be Kermit the Frog? Yeah. Maybe that's because it's fun. That's fair. Do you think it's fun for the listener? I sort of don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that was the response I was expecting. <laughs> I also do like hearing you do voices. Oh. That's fun for me also. Back in my day, we talked like this. So let's see, let's let's hear a let's hear a quick anecdote from back in your day. Just real anything off the cuff. Something that used to be different. Give me a subject. Let's see. Um how did we celebrate Halloween back in your day? When we could have both of them kind of thing. Okay. Back in my day, we carved turnips instead of pumpkins. <laughs> Actually, I think that might be true. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, candles were a precious resource, so we didn't put candles in the turnips. We just had a bunch of creepy turnips outside of our door that looked like little shrunken heads. <laughs> <laughs> no lights. And uh, when Halloween was over, we would gather up the turn the porch turnips, we called them. And we would make turnip soup. The end. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Do you see why I don't feel like I, this would be a good podcast choice for me? Well, but we could we could riff off each other, right? Like, uh, oh, yeah, I remember the turnip days. The days when we would carve the turnips for the Halloween. And uh, sometimes, it's, since we couldn't put candles in them, we would... Put a bunch of little mirrors in them to re- redirect the light <laughs> and make them glow like that. I don't know. No, it doesn't really make sense either, but... Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of fun, but maybe we should just talk about Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, we should just talk about <laughs> Halloween. I mean, we should just do that in general. Well, we do do that in general. Yeah, but we should do more of it. Um. Okay, so... What else besides? Yeah, let's talk about like some segments that we can have on that show. Another jump scare. So you should thank me for not doing it. Should I just constantly be thanking (laughs) you for not jump scaring me? You know, it wouldn't hurt. (laughs) Um. Is that the only way to keep you from jump scaring me? It's like a like thank you for not smoking kind of thing. Like thank you for not jump scaring. 
Yeah, it's thank been you for not five to... <laughs> minutes since our last jump scare. We have a sign. We have a sign up for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm especially susceptible to it when I'm sleepy, I feel yeah, like. Because I'm just not as on edge as normal. Like normally my anxiety is a little bit higher and like I'm more aware of You're more ready potential for potential scares. Potential threats around every Yeah. Time. Yeah. But right now I'm just too busy yawning. Um, so what about, we could talk about, uh, our decorations that we've done so far. Um, we've put up our 12 foot skeleton, skeleton oh, yeah. Walter. Skeleton Walter. We put up some orange. Uh, my, one of my friends also has a 12 foot skeleton and she has a great name for her skeleton. What's her name for her skeleton? Pelvis Costello. All right. That's pretty good. Pretty yeah, good, right? That's pretty good. I feel like the skeleton needs to have like thick glasses. Yeah. If you call it pelvis custom. Yeah. Well, it's pretty hard to get glasses up big enough for that skeleton. It's not, actually. I'm pretty sure I have some in a box somewhere. They're big enough for the 12 foot skeleton. You can get the, I know what glasses you're talking about, and I'm not sure glasses. if they're big enough. I mean, they probably wouldn't look really big on the skeleton, but I'm pretty sure they would fit the skeleton. Yeah. That could be a segment. Coming up with names for 12 foot skeletons. Names for skeletons? Names okay. for skeletons. Yeah. Um, okay. Maybe. Like Skelly Kapowski. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, referencing the character from the Saved by the Bell. Saved by the show, Saved by the Bell. That American classic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm not. Uh, I'm not super jazzed about coming up with skeleton puns. I guess, but that's fine. Why? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> uh. You know, puns, I think, like, a lot of times are similar in my brain to, like, trying to come up with anecdotes on the spot. As soon as I'm, like, come up with puns, I don't have any yeah. puns, you know? Pun names are especially fun for me, though. Yeah, you yeah. do You do enjoy. I know you do enjoy the, the pun names. Celebrity pun names. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, back to our... Back to our... Okay, so no 12-foot skeleton name segment. No, no, no. I'm not saying we can't do that as a segment. I'm just saying I want to move on from that at okay. the moment. Okay. Um, um, our other decorations, we put up some cat skeleton things that are like sort of glow-in-the-dark cat skeletons. Yep. Um, we put up some lights. Some orange lights. They're like Christmas lights, but orange. Yeah. Because orange is the color of Halloween, I guess. Yep. We, well, because oh, of pumpkins. Yeah, yeah. We also carved pumpkins. We carved pumpkins. They um, turned out pretty well. Yeah. Yours actually, I think, turned out the best. Really? Yeah. I thought yours turned out the best. Mine turned out pretty good. I got a white pumpkin and carved a cute skull in it kind of thing. And Svetlana got a white one that she made a ghost. And you got a regular orange one. Svetlana and I used stencils. Yours was the only one that was an original. Yeah. An original creation. So we'll post a, I'll post a picture of those on our Instagram. Oh, yeah. that, that works. Um, I think yours turn like with the light on in it, it just like it's the most like legit jack o' lantern looking one. Yeah. But it's also kind of crazy looking. I did kind of an asymmetrical one. He's got like one big eye and one squinty eye. And, his, like, and a sideways toothy. smile. Yeah. Which so he looks especially unhinged, which I enjoy. Yeah, yeah. It turned out pretty well. We still have a little yellow pumpkin that we got for Rory that we haven't carved yet. Yeah, I gotta figure out what we're gonna do with that one. So um, submit your ideas. Yeah, I guess Talking about pumpkins, again, it's a visual thing, so I guess posting stuff on our Instagram, but talking about pumpkins would obviously be a subject of the... Yeah, I mean, I think that the history of pumpkin carving, I th I do think it actually started with turnips. They carved turnips. That, uh -huh. that sounds sort of familiar for some reason, but yeah. I don't know. Um, I feel like turnips... Seems like it would be a lot harder. I feel like weird turnips with faces also like... Featured heavily in old Christmas cards for some yeah. reason. I was going to maybe look up a picture, but I can't because I'm using my phone as a baby monitor currently. Right, right. Um, what else? We could talk about our favorite Halloween music. Okay. Um, right. Like favorite, favorite, favorite Halloween songs or songs that evoke the feel feeling of Halloween. This year, one of my favorites uh, to listen to has been Whistling Past the Graveyard by Tom Waits. Okay. Um, I feel like I a lot of times forget about that song, and then I then Halloween comes, and I put on my Halloween playlist, mm -hmm. and that song comes on, and 
like, I thought this is a really good song. Tom Waits has a lot of songs that I think you could put on a Halloween playlist. You could probably make a Halloween playlist of Tom Waits songs and have at least like... I've got a couple on my playlist. One, one album worth of songs, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about you? What are some of your favorite Halloween songs? Um, I don't know if I have... I mean, I like plenty of spooky songs, I guess. I guess there's like that spooky, scary skeleton song. That's I what I that thought one. you were going to say. Yeah, that one's the most, like, kind of only listen to it at Halloween. Because most of the spooky songs I like, I'll listen to them whenever. Yeah. That one's, like, a pretty specifically Halloween kind of song. Yeah. Although it's also, like, there's a lot of, like, weird remixes of it when I try to find it, it seems like, uh, that are sort of annoying that I don't particularly like. But, yeah, anyway. Okay, what's your least favorite Halloween song? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I... I do you have a least favorite? Oh, yeah, I do. What is it? Monster Mash. Oh, okay. I like Monster Mash. I I mean it's played out. I find whatever, it pretty annoying. I feel like it's pretty good. Yeah. I feel like it's like Maybe I've just heard it way I've too heard, many times. I've heard some of that the guy that wrote that's other songs and they're all just kind of like it's at least the ones I recall it seemed like he was basically just rewriting the same song over and over until he found the hit version yeah. of it or whatever. Uh I don't know. I mean, I don't really listen to the Monster Mash very much, but I feel like when it comes on, I'm like, hell yeah. Halloween. <laughs> so you're saying I should add that to my playlist? I wouldn't be mad. Yeah. Um. Uh. Probably Werewolves of London, I feel like I've heard too many times. Yeah, that one's not even really a Halloween song. It's just weird. I mean, it is, though. It's, it's on most Halloween playlists. Of course. I mean, it's about werewolf. Yeah. But it doesn't... The werewolf well, doesn't do anything. The werewolf, there's nothing actually spooky happening in it. It's just like I saw a werewolf going to the Chinese food place. Right. It's that's got like, weird lyrics. That's pretty much like it's like I was in some part of London and there was a werewolf. Yeah. Isn't it weird about werewolves? That's pretty much the whole song. Now werewolf bar mitzvah. <laughs> that one's a good one. It is a good one. I don't know. If, is there a whole song? I don't know if I've heard beyond the like. First verse of it or whatever. Oh, yeah. There's a whole song. I just listened to it the other yeah. day. I don't know if I would want to really listen to it. Oh, no. It's, it's excellent. Okay. It's it's excellent. I think that was written by Donald Glover, actually. Oh, was the it? lyrics, anyway. Yeah. Um, what's other Halloween-y stuff to talk about? You don't want to keep going on the music? I can oh. go on the music for a while. Okay. Well, what other music um, stuff do you want to talk about? No, that's okay. Let's let's see. What other segments could we have? Our favorite horror movies. Sure. I mean, Cabin in the Woods is definitely my favorite horror movie. Yeah, out of all of them. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm I'm into the whole meta thing. Yeah, in a, like I love Cabin in the Woods because it's very a lot of horror movies. If they're not super well done, will get me where I'm like analyzing and trying to predict and you know figure out what's going to happen next and oh is this gonna is she gonna be the final girl. Is this going to happen? You know, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. And that, which is a sign generally that I'm not that engaged with the movie, right? I'm not like immersed in it or whatever. But Cabin in the Woods you is rewarding to do that, right? right. Because that's kind of what it's about. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen Cabin in the Woods, it's an extremely good movie. Probably most, most people have seen Cabin in the Woods, I right? I was talking I to somebody know. recently who hadn't seen it, I think. Hmm. Um, yeah, extremely good horror movie. Sort of, in some ways, kind of light on the horror, but it's still there for sure. Yeah. Time. Oh, yeah. But I, it's not especially scary, I there's, don't there's think. There's some scenes that are, are normal horror movie scary, I would say. Yeah. But it's not like... I don't find it... I mean, I don't find it scary, but yeah. maybe somebody would. I don't know. I mean, I don't usually find horror movies that scary. Well, because it's interrupted by the, like... Other people the, the that other are part. watching yeah, what's yeah. happening and stuff. Yeah, so. but there's also scenes where it's like they're running from the zombies and yeah. the zombies are breaking through and the zombies come back to life and the zombies attack them. Whatever. Yeah. Like somebody gets pulled through the window or whatever. Right? Like there's definitely, they definitely have this the, the horror movie parts. Yeah. We've obviously seen it enough times that they're maybe not super scary anymore. Yeah. But I, I actually right. don't feel like I get so scared really like i get tense because movie the, the horror movies are usually tense right and jump scares will get me sometimes in the in that any thing that's like startling is a reflex basically right so yeah but that's not the you. only kind of fear 
you know what you know what always gets me because like jump scares get me a lot of times but like that yeah like you said that's a like startle yeah but like what really gets me is when something sticks in your head and then you're lying in bed later and thinking about it Mm -hmm. and creep yourself out yeah. Have you ever had that? I've never. I don't get that, and I never. I don't. I'm Not never, even after Hereditary. No, I don't get dreams about it. I don't get like. I. I think. I think. I, I don't want to sound like I'm super rational guy or something, but I just don't have a part of my brain that. I, everybody has a part of their brain that's a little bit afraid of ghosts and stuff, right? Like the unknown and scary stuff, right? I don't feel like I have a very strong part of my brain like yeah, that. Yeah, but I'm not talking about I'm just never, ghosts. I'm like, never thinking about like, what if there is a thing in the in the. What dark, if there's the somebody corner? outside your house creeping around? I just don't think about it very much. I don't, it doesn't stick in my brain that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, that's a thing that can possibly happen in real life. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. Right. Yeah. Well, I that's interesting because I wonder, I, I do think that some of that comes down to existing as a man for, versus existing as a woman yeah, in the world. That's totally plausible that like you just have a higher baseline of fear and anxiety yeah. for your personal safety as a woman or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that than I do. Yeah. Uh, especially I'm also obviously white and, you know more or less straight and more or less cis and whatever, right? Like ish. <laughs> ish. Uh enough passing certainly. Um that I just don't have to worry about that stuff too much. Obviously there's plenty of yeah terrible things that happen to people in the world, even cis white guys or whatever. But um I don't know. It's just not a part of my psyche. I, I it's yeah. You know, everybody talk everybody says that I'm a super chill kind of person or whatever that's yeah, which is great because I am not. Right. I I am the anxious one in this relationship for sure. And I don't. And I say that people say that because I don't try to be particularly. I just it's just how I kind of am seem to be wired or whatever. So I'm just not that worried about. I'm not yeah. worried about stuff to the point where after I see a movie, I keep thinking about it in a I'm actually scared of it kind of way. I if it's a good movie, I keep thinking about it in terms of the structure, the plot, the whatever it is that's good about it or whatever that was thought provoking or interesting or you know beautiful or whatever about Cuz I remember I was staying over at your apartment after we saw Hereditary mm-hmm. and I had to sleep with the light on for about a week. Yeah, I remember that. That's literally that's never happened to me. I don't remember that even happening to me as a kid. Maybe, never had maybe. never had fear of the dark. I mean, a little bit, but not very much. Yeah. Because um, I feel like that's kind of a primal fear, right? Like, yeah. that's a healthy fear to have. Yeah. I, I'm not saying I'm immune to fear or something. Uh, it's just, just like, it never takes very strong hold of my psyche. So I shouldn't I tell people about your No Fear t shirt collection. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wish you'd stop wearing those in public. Yeah. And my big dog shirt. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just not, it's not how my brain typically works. It's like, it's it, we've talked about it kind of before where like or I think it was last time we were talking about the the stuff you cringe about and how it doesn't really stick in my brain either um and it's I think similar it, a lot of stuff just kind of slides off my brain like it's a duck with water or whatever yeah where it's like I think about it a little bit and then I'm like eh. ducks don't slide off the water though it's the other way around that's I mean you were supposed actually, to say don't correct me if I'm wrong <laughs> yeah don't correct me if I'm wrong actually um actually. If something is sliding off of one thing, isn't the other thing also sliding off of that? If if water slides no, off a duck, isn't a duck no, also sliding no, off of water? No, if you go down, if you're sliding down a slide, the slide's not sliding off of you. I mean, it kind of is. No. It kind of is. No. Phys- from a physics standpoint. No, no <laughs> normal is. person would say, like, the slide was sliding off of me. From... Uh, Every all unless you want to be the weirdo at the playground. All reference points are equally valid, and so if you are the reference point and everything, and you look and you keep you stationary, everything else is sliding off of you. Don't correct me. <laughs> You're correcting me. Am I correcting? You? I don't know who's correcting who at this point. Um, actually. Um. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So, what is your least favorite Halloween movie? Or horror movie. Uh, I actually really don't like the Halloween movies. The, yeah. the Michael Myers. Like, yeah. I feel like when I... Not like, even the first one? 
I like the first one. I don't, honestly don't remember the first one that well. The, the only one I remember very well is the one we watched when we did our 31 thing. Well, that one was terrible. Which was terrible. It was like the first, the second part of a, of the last one or I don't know, something like first that. First part. There's, the there's, first an, part? there's one more, yeah, there's which one I more. have heard very bad things about. Yeah. Yeah. It, because I, what I like about horror, I mean, there's different things I like about horror, like but I, one thing I like about it is when the horror is a metaphor or is 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 like a reference to a societal fear or whatever, right? Right? Like vampires, you could look at as like they're like aristocrats who suck blood from common people, right? They're like parasites on our society. There's a very easy anti-capitalist uh, reading of that you could do. Um, or you could just kind of look at it as a nature is scary and might might destroy us kind of thing as well if you if you think of more sort of old school vampire stuff um you could also uh, and then there's stuff like you know freddy krueger and how dreams can be scary or whatever is his basic thing right right um nightmares and are they real and what if they were real right that's a re- that's sort of a thing i get right it's it's a, a fear i understand um jason is kind of just a fear of you know, fear of the dark, fear of machetes, <laughs> fear of the dead, fear of undead stuff, right? Dead. We're afraid of dead bodies because they're rotten and, and could harm us from if we are too... You know, there's primal reasons to be scared of some of these things, right? And then you get to Michael Myers and it's like, what is he supposed to represent? Is he supposed to be how mentally ill people are scary, right? Which isn't great. Yeah. Also, he's supposed to be just a guy but he's been killed a bajillion times and he just gets back up wait wait i remember though there is one halloween movie that i really like besides the first one okay um i think it's i think it's the third one maybe is it the one that's like totally different and not really part of the it halloween? takes place in a mental institution well, some of it takes place in a hospital okay paul Rudd is in it that sounds familiar and it's it's like early Paul Rudd, but you can already see him like being Paul Rudd. <laughs> okay, I don't remember if the rest of the movie is good, but the part with Paul, the parts with Paul Rudd are wonderful. There's a scene where he's trying a doorknob, trying to get into a room, and it's locked. And then Mike Myers appears at the end of the hallway, and Paul Rudd just kind of looks over at him and kind of goes, "Huh." <laughs> And kind of smiles at him and then starts jiggling the door handle really (laughs) hard. And it's like, great. Um, So I I think it's three. I don't remember. I think it's three. Yeah. Um, But anyway, the Halloween movie that Paul Rudd's in, that one is also, that one is a treasure. Yeah. I just don't like the main conceit. And also the last movie we watched was just, just bad. Yeah. It was stupid and didn't make any sense. And like. Yeah. That one was. Anyway. That one was. Really awful. Yeah. And incoherent. I just don't vibe, I guess, with the Halloween ones. It's, and, and it's Myers hard to, like, put Jamie Lee Curtis in something and have it be that bad. It, and it is also funny to me that his mask is a William Shatner mask. That's kind of great. Yeah, that's that's weird. But yeah. anyway, what, what would you say, what's your least favorite? Halloween my movie? least favorite. Yeah. I don't think I said my favorite yet, but my okay. least favorite. Well, how about your favorite, then, if you have that okay. ready to go? Um, well... I have, I, I think I kind of have, t- they're close. I got two two that I really, really like, mm-hmm. which is The Descent right. and Sinister. I've rewatched those quite a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, the Descent is a great one for metaphors. It's really a metaphor for grief. Right, right. right. Um, and uh, Sinister also is kind of a metaphor. Uh, it's about a writer struggling to write a follow-up to this book that he wrote that was really popular and he, um, it was a true crime book, and he moves his family into a murder house without right. telling them that he's moving them into right, a murder right. house. He just tells them they're moving to the town where the murders took place, but doesn't tell them it was in the actual house. Right. So it's kind of like they're being haunted, and he's haunted by like the ghosts of his past, and it's kind of a metaphor for like his struggles as a writer and struggling to like get back to his like previous fame Mm -hmm. sacrificing his family like in pursuit of that right 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 um figuratively and then also literally by moving them into this Mm -hmm. murder house so it's i don't want to spoil it too much if anybody out there hasn't seen it but that is 
a great one. Ethan Hawke is in it, and he's wonderful in it. Um, it's interesting, just a total random thought, uh, is that that is kind of what the Odyssey is about, I think, hmm. in some ways. Like, a lot of Odysse- Odysseus's problems stem from, like, a hunger for fame, at least in my reading of it, like, a reading that you can have of it. Like, for example... So would you <laughs> would you say The Odyssey is your favorite Halloween story? Because <laughs> I don't think you could get much more pretentious than that. They go to the underworld. <laughs> so... If I met somebody and they were and I was like, "What's your favorite Halloween story?" and they said the Odyssey and then started launching into why it's a Halloween story, I would leave. I mean, you so much of our of our our culture and our storytelling has roots in in Homer and the Odyssey and stuff. You could sort of make an argument for a lot of things that, that the Odyssey could count. Yeah. But no, I, it's yeah. just a random thought I had. Yeah. But okay, so Sinister is when you were like, "What's have you thought of uh, least, least favorite? Okay. Um, oh, yeah. You know what horror movie I really hated that I actually saw in the theater was The Ninth Gate. I don't know if I've seen that one. It's Johnny Depp. He's looking for Gate to Hell. It sounds familiar, but I don't. It's really bad. It had a terrible ending. Like, you know when something is like, you're just waiting for the payoff? That movie's like all tension. And then the ending is just like, what? It's over now? Oh. Nothing really happened? Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's, I very much did not enjoy that movie. Um. I thought of a third, I actually realized I have three. I have a top three, not a top, top three two. favorite. Okay. Yeah. Because I also have to mention Oculus. Okay, I was going to say, I was wondering if you were going to mention Oculus. Yeah, I have to mention Oculus because that one is also excellent. Right. That um, one. That one's Mike Flanagan, right? Yeah, that one's Mike yeah. Flanagan. Karen before Gillen's before he'd done any Netflix series, I right. think. Um, and Karen, yeah, Karen Gillan is in it. Um, fantastic movie. Um, oh, uh, Katie Sackhoff is in that one as well. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Um, we are probably getting about to our time for the episode. Oh, dang, um, I have so much more Halloween in me. Yeah. Uh, so that could be our actual podcast next yeah. week. <laughs> this um, is the first one that I've actually been like, oh, yeah, I would make that podcast for sure. So would it be, I mean, do we like the um, It's Freaking Bats title? <laughs> or, um, or just like because my one of my ideas was like halloween in july right because there's like christmas in july yeah right so halloween in july would be kind of a play on that yeah like halloween all year round hmm it's spooking time uh <laughs> just thinking of random names like it's it, spooky time it's spooking time it's spooking time tis the spooky season Tis the spooky season tis the season for spooks spooktober spooktober Year round, uh, Halloween Town. I thought of Halloween Town, yeah, but that's just Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, but the idea is it's yeah. Halloween there all the time. Yeah, right? Halloween Town. Halloween Town's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it might be copyrighted or trademarked yeah. or something. Yeah, trademarked. I guess um, we might get in trouble for using that. I don't know. Um, oops! I'll jump scares. <laughs> oops! I'll jump scares. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for us. Yeah. Maybe next week we will be back and talking about Halloween again. I mean, try to stop us. <laughs> <laughs> try to stop me. Yeah. Especially Ginger. Yeah. Uh, should we do our uh, social media stuff? Yeah. Um, so you can find all of our social media links on our website at coolpodcast.website. You can email us at what at coolpodcast.website. We are on Twitter and Instagram at What Should Pod and Threads and Threads, and uh, you can look us up on Facebook. We have a Facebook page if that's your jam. And yeah, email us or message us your questions, suggestions, love, hate. Leave us a review, especially on Apple Podcasts. That will really help us. And yeah, that's all I got. We also probably will have some kind of silly question on our Spotify. If you listen on Spotify, you can fill that in. And you can also see the weird comments that Lana left on a bunch of <laughs> random episodes. Yeah. Um, and uh, give us your suggestions for an outro for our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Tune in, tune in next week to see if we have an outro again. <laughs> 
because we're still looking for that. Yeah. We need a we need a like funny thing to get people to keep listening after. Yeah. You know after our our spiel. Or that's whatever. the whole th- that's the whole reason for an outro, right? Yeah, or at least for like a, a final thing. Maybe we could just have Rory scream really loudly. Can you scream really loud, buddy? Oh, he looked really concerned. Oh, are you concerned? Well, for now, I guess we'll just say bye. Bye. What was that podcast about? I'm trying to figure it out. Didn't catch what that was about.